A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. Jesus said to his disciples, Whoever loves me will keep my word, and my Father will love him. And we will come to him and make our dwelling with him. Whoever does not love me does not keep my words. Yet the word you hear is not mine, but that of the Father who sent me. I have told you this while I am with you, the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you everything and remind you of all that I told you. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give it to you. Do not let your hearts be troubled or afraid. You heard me tell you I am going away and I will come back to you. If you loved me, you would rejoice that I am going to the Father, for the Father is greater than I. And now I have told you this before it happens, so that when it happens, you may believe. The Gospel of the Lord. Last week, one of our new saints is Mother Rivier, Anne-Marie Rivier, who is dear to the hearts of this parish. We see her statue over to your right-hand side. And Mother Rivier was about 4'4", so I think the statue is the right size of what she actually looked like. And Mother Rivier was born in 1768 during a time where France was very strongly Catholic. Sometimes in the rural areas, the catechesis wasn't the best. And so at 18 years old, Mother Rivier went to the pastor and asked if she could teach some of the girls in the local village. Now, she had already gone through a lot. At one and a half years old, she fell out of bed and broke her hip. And for, I don't know, five or six years, she, all she could do was crawl. She couldn't uh, stand. And then she had a small healing on September 8th, Mary's birthday, where she was able to use crutches. And then the following year, I think on the assumption, she had a complete healing. Although she, it says that she still did suffer somewhat. And so the pastor finally said yes. And then two years later, 1789, the French Revolution happens. Now, I'm not sure if we can appreciate as well exactly what that felt like, because our experience in New Hampshire, we look back and we can say, well, in the 70s, the churches were really full in the 80s, still in the 90s, and it it started dwindling, and we see a very small, we saw a dwindling of the influence of Christianity in New Hampshire in our lifetime. For them, it was within like two years. For over a thousand years, they practiced Catholicism, they had had some war with Protestants and Catholics but mainly Catholicism prevailed in France. And now it was outlawed. Priests were hunted down and killed. Religious orders were gathered up and killed. Many of them fled. They had to disband. In the midst of this, 1795, in the midst of this, little four-foot Mother Rivier in her 20s felt the Holy Spirit 
call her to begin a religious order. In the midst of the persecution, not when it was going to get better. Uh, our mentality today, we, want, we need to get everything lined up, right? We need to have everything. Do we have the amount of money? Do we have the space? Do we have... We need to have everything lined up. It was devastation. And yet, she heard the Holy Spirit. And she began this order in the midst of, they call it the reign of terror. And when finally... Catholicism was allowed to be practiced openly again, her order began to thrive. It began to help restore Catholicism in France. They began to go throughout the whole world. They came to Canada. They came down here. They were here in this parish for decades. And their influence from her yes to the Holy Spirit have influenced many of us who are here. When I had my conversion and I first came to St. Marie and I was youth minister here, and the presentation of Mary's sisters were here, and they began to teach me. I, this was all new for me. And I began to fall in love with the French spirituality, and I've continued since this day. Mother Rivi had an influence on my life through these sisters from 200 years ago. And there was one sister, and some of you may remember, her name was Sister Alfred. She was a healing sister. And she was friends with Father Mark Montminy. And she was very gruff, from those who remember. She was probably a, maybe a little taller than Mother Rivier, but not much. And so I wanted her to pray over me before I went to the seminary. She was in Hudson. Father Mark brought me down to see her. And she, she was praying over me. And I said, Sister Alfred, and she said, she looked up, what? Do you have any advice for me before I go to the seminary? Be holy or get out. <laughs> I'm more afraid when I die to encounter Sister Alfred than Mother Mary. <laughs> she died five months later, so I was grateful for the opportunity to meet her. In the gospel today, Jesus tells us that there'll be trouble in the world. And there was then, and there is now. And there has been, all in between, trouble in the world. Difficult times, challenging times. And he told us not to be troubled, not to have anxiety, not to worry because he would send another, the advocate who would direct us and guide us and protect us in all truth. And we may say, well, it seems like truth is dwindling in our culture and society today. And I would say, then get ready. We remember this, the story in the Old Testament in Genesis, the Tower of Babel. Huh? They were trying to reach like God. It's symbolic of we're God. We're going to be God. And then what happens? They can't communicate with one another. They speak and they can't hear each other. They don't understand each other. And it collapses. And that is used very often in our understanding of Pentecost. When Pentecost happens, it's a reversal of the Tower of Babel because we have the Holy Spirit who helps us to communicate because it's communication from heaven. It's communication from God. And so it reverses the Tower of Babel. And it will be like this until the end of time. The problem is because we humans sometimes are very stupid and we make the same mistakes over and over again even though we have history to show us what happens when we break the commandments, when we form our own rules and our own commandments and our own philosophies, and how every single time it always ends in demise, even though we have that history, we forget. And I think, I was meditating this week, is there a time 
that we have been more like the Tower of Babel in a long time. We can't communicate. We're changing words. We're changing how many genders there are. We're changing everything. And so then we can't communicate. And it's all confusion. The Tower of Babel brought confusion. There's all this confusion. But I see it as good news. Because something great's going to happen. We're not going to have the Tower of Babel without a new Pentecost. It's the same Pentecost, but a new outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Because it's the promise of Jesus. That's what we hear in the Gospel today. It's His promise. These aren't my words. This isn't what I think. It's not Father Rick's philosophy. This is Jesus. The Word of God. The living word. And he tells us that the Holy Spirit will comfort us and lead us to all truth. And so when confusion begins to happen, I'm saying, all right, let's get ready. Let's be ready for the new outpouring of the Holy Spirit so that truth and freedom and love will prevail in a greater way. And so what maybe is this calling us to? This Thursday, with the Ascension to the following Sunday, is the first novena in the church, a novena of Pentecost, novena to the Holy Spirit. And we do this every year, and I would say, let's do it with even greater vigor this year, more intention. Maybe see this time, maybe go back to Lent, how we give things up during Lent. I know it's still Easter. But fast during these nine days. Read Scripture. Pray the Rosary every day. Mother Mary was with the apostles as they were waiting and praying for Pentecost. And she's a very powerful intercessor. She's the spouse of the Holy Spirit. And so invite her, pray the rosary every day from Ascension to Pentecost. Do some kind of novena. I found uh, this book called About the Holy Spirit from Scepter. It's a little bit long. It might be, it's about 20, 25 minutes to do each day. It's a novena. That might be too much, but I'm going to do it. Find some kind of novena and fast and pray and pray for a greater outpouring of the Holy Spirit. We need it. And the Holy Spirit wants to give this to us. Do we really think God, looking down the world, is joy-filled with all the confusion and hatred towards one another? We need to begin to think like Christ again. He has one mind. Uh, And the power of the Holy Spirit, the fire of the Holy Spirit is what helps us to have the mind, to put on the mind of Christ, the mind of Jesus. And we need an end to this confusion. And we also have to have complete confidence and trust. It seems to be getting worse and worse, and we might even be afraid, well, maybe it's the end times, maybe it's the end of the world. Well, he promised that that was going to happen too. So if it does, it does. Either way, we need to be prepared, either for the second coming of Christ, whenever it's going to be, or for a greater outpouring of his love, a greater outpouring of the Holy Spirit in our lives, in our interior, in our our families, our churches, our world. As we continue the worship today and adore Jesus in the Eucharist, maybe we be strengthened to have that food from heaven, to enter more intentionally into this novena of Pentecost so that we may allow Babel to be reversed once again. Amen. Resurrexit, sicut dixit, 
Oh, no.